This is a Talking Audiobooks podcast sale alert for Audible.com's Listens You'll Love sale. The details of the sale are as follows. The sale runs from July 9th, 2017 through 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time on July 15th, 2017. This sale is open to members of Audible.com only. The books in the sale number in the hundreds, and each title is on sale for $4.95 plus tax if you are in a state that requires you to pay sales tax like I am. I'm not going to go over every book that's in the sale because there are literally hundreds of them. I'm going to talk about a few of them that are in my own library and some that I am going to purchase uh, from the sale myself. A couple were on my wish list. But uh, before I do that, I have to offer two disclaimers. The first is that we are not being paid or induced by Audible.com to promote their sale on our podcast. They have no involvement in this. This is something that we are doing because we believe that you, the listeners of the Talking Audiobooks podcast, should be made aware of as many bargains and sales as we possibly can make you aware of. We did this last month with a ChristianAudio.com sale, and we're doing it here with this Audible sale. Um, and if you know of any other websites that are currently offering big sales that uh, might be worth us mentioning on one of these sales alerts, you can email that information to feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com, and we will do our best to work up a little promo and talk about it for as long as the sale is going on. And if you happen to be a representative of one of those websites and can get us that information ahead of time, so much the better. Um, like I said, we do not get any inducement or payment from Audible for mentioning the sale. This is just something that we're doing for you, the listeners. The second disclaimer that I offer is that the book recommendations or the books that I have uh, mentioned that I might be getting are my own choices. They are not being influenced by anyone. They are not being suggested to me by anyone at Audible. They are not being suggested to me by producer Ken or anybody else. These are my own personal selections. So with that out of the way, let's talk specifics of the Audible Listens You'll Love sale. <laughs> So there are a lot of categories to choose from in this sale. You have customer favorites, editor's picks, mysteries and thrillers, science fiction, fantasy, romance, fiction, nonfiction, business and self-development, and history biography as your main categories to choose from. And each one has between, you know, 19 and like 50 uh, titles to choose from. Each category does. I got my email about the sale this morning. It said that two books in my wish list were part of the sale. They were uh, Green Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson and Monster Hunter Memoirs, Sinners by Larry Correa and John Ringo. And then I went through and I added probably four more to my cart. They were uh, by authors I've read before, such as The Stranger by Harlan Coben and Tell No Lies by Greg Hurwitz. There was an autobiography that caught my interest that probably should have been on my wish list, and that is QB, My Life Behind the Spiral by Steve Young, the former 49ers quarterback. And the other one that I added to my uh, wish list for possible later purchase is Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, narrated by John Lee. And those are sort of the six titles that I came away from right away. I'll probably take another pass at this sale just to see if anything else grabs my attention. But those are probably the six that I will buy uh, from the sale because, again, this sale... Uh, $4.95, that's less than the average cost of a credit for me. So even though I have 
a substantial number of credits at the moment, I will probably still pay in cash for most, if not all, of the books in the sale. Um, you know, starting out with two on my list and getting it up to six, that's an okay sale for me. I've had better sales. I've had worse sales, but, um, you know, this one, I'm okay with it. You know, like I said, it's just one of those things where you browse it and you come across something and say, oh, I didn't think about that, or that should have been on my wish list the whole time, and that's kind of what I've done here. There are some other titles by other very famous authors, and I said I'm not going to run through them all. Uh, there's some things in my library that are in the sale. Uh, titles by Tom Clancy and Mary Roach are in the sale for me. I mean, I already own them, and um, one of them is also a biography of Johnny Carson by his former lawyer, Henry Bushkin, and uh, that one's one I really enjoyed uh, as well. The Mary Roach book is on the science of human cadavers. It's called Stiff. Uh, if you have a squeamish stomach, you might want to um, stay clear of that one, but if you're interested or fascinated by the subject and don't mind a little bit of morbid talk, then uh, by all means, go for it. Out of all the books that are in this sale that are in my library, if I had one that I would absolutely recommend, it would be uh, what if serious scientific answers to absurd hypothetical questions written by Randall Monroe and narrated by Will Wheaton? This is a fun book I picked up in a daily deal, I think, a couple years ago. Uh, what it is is the author has a website and he is asked all these crazy questions and he compiled some of his best answers into a book. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, find out what would happen if everybody in the world jumped off a chair at the same time. Uh, find out what would happen if a baseball were thrown at light speed. Uh, here's a hint. A lot of bad things, particularly if you happen to be the person to throw the baseball or anyone in the vicinity. Uh, what if you made a periodic table of elements, an actual table out of it? Uh, that may be my favorite uh, thing in the uh, entire book. Um, what I'm going to do right now, I just think this book is so much fun and it will have an interest for a lot of people. And I think Will Wheaton is the perfect choice to narrate something like this. And he did such a fantastic job. I'm going to play an excerpt for you of what if serious scientific answers to absurd hypothetical questions by Randall Munro. Uh, here's an excerpt, and after that, we'll be back and we'll close out this sale alert. Spent fuel from nuclear reactors is highly radioactive. Water is good for both radiation shielding and cooling, so fuel is stored at the bottom of pools for a couple of decades until it's inert enough to be moved into dry casks. We haven't really agreed on where to put those dry casks yet. One of these days, we should probably figure that out. A typical spent fuel pool is deeper than a regular pool and has an extra deep section where the actual fuel rods are kept. The heat wouldn't be a big problem. The water temperature in a fuel pool can, in theory, go as high as 50 degrees Celsius, but in practice, it's generally between 25 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius, warmer than most pools, but cooler than a hot tub. The most highly radioactive fuel rods are those recently removed from a reactor. For the kinds of radiation coming off spent nuclear fuel, every 7 centimeters of water cuts the amount of radiation in half. Right next to the fuel casks, the radiation dose is extremely high but it drops off quickly with distance. Based on the activity levels provided by Ontario Hydro in their report, the region of danger extends just a meter or two from the rods. Swimming to the bottom, touching your elbows to a fresh fuel canister, and immediately swimming back up would probably be enough to kill you. Yet, outside the outer boundary, you could swim around as long as you wanted, 
the dose from the core would be less than the normal background dose you get from walking around. In fact, as long as you were underwater, you would be shielded from most of that normal background dose. You may actually receive a lower dose of radiation treading water in a spent fuel pool than walking around on the street. That's if everything goes as planned. If there's corrosion in the spent fuel rod casings, there may be some fission products in the water. They do a pretty good job of keeping the water clean, and it wouldn't hurt you to swim in it, but it's radioactive enough that it wouldn't be legal to sell it as bottled water. Which is too bad, it'd make a hell of an energy drink. We know spent fuel pools can be safe to swim in because they're routinely serviced by human divers. However, these divers have to be careful. On August 31st, 2010, a diver was servicing the spent fuel pool at the Liebstadt nuclear reactor in Switzerland. He spotted an unidentified length of tubing on the bottom of the pool and radioed his supervisor to ask what to do. He was told to put it in his tool basket, which he did. Due to bubble noise in the pool, he didn't hear his radiation alarm. When the tool basket was lifted from the water, the room's radiation alarms went off. The basket was dropped back in the water, and the diver left the pool. The diver's dosimeter badges showed that he'd received a higher-than-normal whole-body dose, and the dose in his right hand was extremely high. The object turned out to be protective tubing from a radiation monitor in the reactor core, made highly radioactive by neutron flux. It had been accidentally sheared off while a capsule was being closed in 2006. It sank to a remote corner of the pool, where it sat unnoticed for four years. The tubing was so radioactive that if he'd tucked it into a tool belt or shoulder bag where it sat close to his body, he could have been killed. As it was... The water protected him, and only his hand, a body part more resistant to radiation than the delicate internal organs, received a heavy dose. So, as far as swimming safety goes, the bottom line is that you'd probably be okay as long as you didn't dive to the bottom or pick up anything strange. But just to be sure, I got in touch with a friend of mine who works at a research reactor and asked him what he thought would happen to someone who tried to swim in their radiation containment pool. In our reactor, he thought about it for a moment. You die pretty quickly before reaching the water. And there you have an excerpt from What If? Serious Scientific Answers to Absurd Hypothetical Questions, written by Randall Munro, narrated by Will Wheaton. As I said, of all the books in my library that are a part of this sale, this one is easily my favorite. I've listened to it a couple different times. I'll probably listen to it again next year as well. It's just a wonderfully humorous book that answers some pretty strange questions. Now, if you're listening to this and you're not a member of Audible.com already, you can get a 30-day free trial. And if you do that now, you can take part in this members-only sale. How do you do that? You go to audibletrial.com, that's all one word, slash talking audiobooks. And if you do that, you can sign up for a 30-day free trial. You'll get one free book, and you'll have access to this members-only sale. And that's a great way. You can build up your audiobook library pretty fast and pretty inexpensively just by taking part in this sale. So if you're interested in that, head on over to audibletrial.com slash talking audiobooks and sign up for your free 30-day free trial. You'll be helping the show out immensely if you do that. I want to mention that you can join our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash talking audiobooks. That's all one word again, talking audiobooks. And if you do that, you will get early notification of these types of sales. You'll get notified of who is offering books for free and when and for how long. You can start your own discussion threads. You can share your own recommendations to everyone else. Tell us what you bought in this sale or what you're interested in in this sale. Your thoughts on it. Uh, pretty much anything goes. If you have a 
pr- book promotion that you want to offer listeners of the Talking Audiobooks podcast. If you're a narrator looking for reviewers or an author looking for reviewers, or if you're a blogger wanting to share your reviews, uh, the atmosphere over there is pretty loose and anything goes really as long as you keep it clean. That's pretty much all we ask over at the Facebook group. We just started that about a week or so ago as of this recording. We've got a, over 60 members in a very short amount of time, but we would like to see more people get involved and get active. If you want to tell me specifically about the books that you got in this sale or the books that you might recommend to me, I would love to hear that. And you can email me at feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. Let me know what you picked up in this Audible sale or what you think I might like. And who knows, you might even get a shout out on the show for doing exactly that. That's going to wrap it up for this Talking Audiobooks sale alert for the Audible Listens You'll Love sale. This sale, again, runs through 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time on July 15th, so browse the sale while you can and make the purchases that interest you the most. And until next time, I will end this sale alert the same way I end all of the Talking Audiobooks podcast episodes by encouraging you to keep listening. Audiobooks is a trademark of Kenjoy Media, produced by Kenjoy Media, copyright 2017, all rights reserved. Your host has been Casey Trowbridge, produced by Ken Joy, theme music composed by Christian Anderson, licensed through EpidemicMusic.com. Visit our website at TalkingAudiobooks.com, follow us on Twitter at Talking Audio, follow us on Facebook at Talking Audiobooks, and subscribe to the Talking Audiobooks YouTube channel. Here's a disclaimer. Various sponsors, like Audible.com, help make this podcast possible. However, they are not responsible for its content, they don't dictate what we talk about or what books we share with you, and therefore the opinions that you hear on here are unfortunately those of the host and our guests. We'd love to hear from you, so email us at feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. Tell us what audiobooks you're listening to, what you've liked in the past, narrators that you like. Ask us questions, anything. It's for your feedback. Feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. That's it. See you next time on Talking Audiobooks.